Hello, everyone. My name is Oksana. It's Road to Edoverse, Weekly Edoverse Insider. We deliver the, the second part, and we will deliver the news about the creation of our project Edoverse. So please, may I ask first uh, Tokugawa-san to speak? Okay. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Oksana. Uh, now, uh, what I would like to talk about today is the uh, newness of Edo. Uh, among the major cities in the world, uh, obviously Rome is very old, 2,500 years old, but uh, you can also trace uh, the history of London, Paris, and Vienna until the Roman times. Uh, Istanbul is very old, and so on and so on. Uh, now, Edo was, as a city, it was practically born in, uh, well, 1600, when uh, Ieyasu, Tokugawa Ieyasu, my ancestor, became the uh, de facto ruler of Japan. So it took three more years for him to uh, be appointed shogun by the emperor. Uh, until then, uh, the main cities of the Kanto Plain were uh, like Kamakura or Odawara, surprisingly. Odawara, I mean, it's, 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 it's a nice, a very nice place, but no one would think it, of it as some kind of a center, but it was the center of the Kanto Plains. So uh, you think of the timing, and uh, what's interesting is that uh, end of the 16th century, beginning of the 17th century, so it coincides with the arrival of the uh, Pilgrim Fathers to the uh, New World, uh, to North America, in the Eastern Shores. And uh, what's more interesting is that, uh, and this is the problem that Tokugawa Ieyasu faced uh, when he became the, uh, well, victor in the Battle of Sekigahara, is that now he had to restore Japan. You see, it's, so Japan until then, so you could say that it was born around 700 when we started to call our country Japan, Nippon. And then uh, our ruler became, until then it was a great king, Okimi, but he started to call himself Tenno. Uh, so we sinicized our state back then. And then until like, well, a hundred years before Ieyasu, so until the mid uh, or early 16th century, most of the samurai warlords were actually, you could trace them back to the uh, imperial family. So it was a very tightly knit community, the entire Jap uh, Japanese political class. But they were more or less completely destroyed by Oda Nobunaga and then Toyotomi Hideyoshi. And so there was no order. And uh, and also, uh, people had become warlike, uh, but you had to impose peace on those people. And uh, so what the the strategy of Ieyasu, and I think this is uh, way beyond his times, was that to create a new social order in on a blank slate. So he comes into the Kanto Plains, he starts to create land, land reclamation, reclamation. So uh, up until the uh, the crossing at Hibiya, Hibiya Kosaten, right next to the Imperial Palace. Uh, that was underwater until then. Uh, River Tone was huge and it was flooding all, all the time. So uh, they had to change the course of the river and so on and so forth. So there was a very large civil engineering uh, carried out in the Kanto Plains, and then eventually all over Japan. Uh, the area of, of area of the acreage of flat land uh, facing water, well, mostly on the coastline, doubled in the first, uh, well, 60 years or so of Tokugawa rule. You see, there was excess labor, and then so, uh, and then after that, uh, population increased, uh, well, it more than doubled in the next 100 years, uh, from 13 million to 30 million. And uh, Edo was used as, how should I say, the uh, pivot for a major social transformation. So Ieyasu came to Edo, well, he was kicked out of historical Japan into the Kanto Plains by the warlord before him, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, but he decided to stay and create a new social order. So uh, what makes Japan so difficult to understand uh, is it comes from the fact that, in fact, there are two Japans. So one centered around Kyoto, and this is old Japan. Think of this as Europe. And then there is the new Japan centered around Edo and then reaching upward northwards. So think of this as North America. And it's uh, two completely different uh, cultures. And uh, also in historical depth, very different societies uh, put together and thinking as one. So it is as uh, if there are only Israelis and they all the people of Israel call themselves Israelis 
They never mention Jews or Arabs or Palestines. They're all Israelis, but they're very different uh, kinds of people. So uh, each half hating the other, but still thinking them of themselves as Israelis. So that is Japan. Uh, Eastern Japan is new uh, and Western Japan is old. And, and uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu tried to create, well, turn all of Japan into this new Japan. And uh, more or less based on Buddhism, and so people could live in harmony. Uh, and this is not because he was an idealist or, uh, well, his heart was bleeding, but that was the only way to maintain peace and therefore to preserve uh, the gains had by all the samurai warlords back then. So that I think I've uh, used up my time, more or less. Or could I go on, go on? Well, I could go on for hours about this. If you want, but, I, I, but, I, but I, I think that would be enough for now. So this is this is it. We're trying. We're it's it 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 seems to be that we are uh, digging into deep history, but at the same time, we're talking about the creation of a new society, which I think uh, suits our purpose and uh, what we're trying to do very well. So there's an overlap there. You know. Yes. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Very exciting information. And the next, uh, please, uh, uh, again, the CTO of the project, may I ask you to speak? Hi, everyone. I'm Gan, uh, CTO in this project. And then I just back from Malaysia to Japan. I'm really excited to join our project. And then today, I'd like to uh, introduce the po possibilities of Edubers and then the future uh, you know, future wise. So basically, I'm in charge of this project from the technology side, including business ecosystem, and then like uh, avatars, like real, you know, real space, anything like that. And then uh, at the very first stage, I had this project. It was super exciting because we can see many types of metaverse now in this world. Like we can see like sandbox, maybe we can see this central land. But those types of spaces, yeah, definitely nice and so exciting. But basically, for certain people could enjoy this space, but for certain people, no. Because these types of metaverse is basically focusing on the gaming application or gaming culture, right? But we, what we are creating in this metaverse is we can say we can recreate Edo City in metaverse, which is super powerful because this space could be super attractive for the people who loves, you know, playing a game and then the people who loves a culture and then the people who loves samurai, you know, ninja, geisha, fuji, you know, many types of foreign people definitely interested in our space. So what we want to, what we want to do is we'd like to combine all of those parts with the historical value and cultural value. Because maybe we will have more than, you know, one, more than million types of metaverse, like, you know, like Square Enix will create some new metaverse. Maybe Konami will create new metaverse. Of course, Facebook changed their name to Meta to create new metaverse, right? Many types of metaverse. But I think the project of our uh, Edoverse is basically focusing on the culture and Edo City, supervised by supervised by Mr. Tokugawa. This is the real one. Real Tokugawa shogun, you know, show up in our universe. This is super exciting and super wonderful and super easy for the people to understand what we are going to do. Maybe we can see like, you know, high sophisticated building in Edo City, which is, you know, like futurized, super crazy, super futurized. And then I think the people can create new original game gaming application in this universe so that they can you know have some kind of ecosystem under which they can get a coin and token with playing a game and then maybe they can give some coin to the others as a donation in edo era we had uh terracoya so-called terracoya terracoya is basically a temple in which the people can study and then uh, some artists can show their works in temple. And then basically Terracoya is, you know, operated by kind of, I'm not sure, maybe I need to ask Mr. Tokuya, but maybe this temple should be operated by some donation or supported by others, which means, for example, if we create Edvas, we can let the people play a game with getting a coin, and then these people can 
give this coin to real temple or terracotta so that this ecosystem is, you know, saved by contribution and considering others. This is a quite new ecosystem and a quite new concept. And then we have great uh, chief tokenomics officer who can create, you know, quite new ecosystem. For example, like we can see many types of DeFi, a uh, so-called DeFi token, but this DeFi token basically has no, you know, fundamental value now. But in our ecosystem, we will issue a lot of many types of NFTs, like we can play games with this NFT. We can use this NFT as an entrance ticket to, for example, Edojo or something like that. And then as this NFT market cap and transaction volume is going to be increasing, our DeFi is going to be increasing. So our DeFi is going to be basically, you know, based on our uh, ecosystem value, which is totally different from the others. So I think in token ecosystem, we can create quite new one. In metaverse system, we can create, we can create quite new one because we have a main and easy concept for the pe all of the people to understand easily. We have Edo City here. And then we have Tokugawa here, Mr. Tokugawa here. We have Shogun here. It's not like Metaverse. It's like real world. Finally, we can have Edo City in this real world Metaverse. This is a, you know, kind of combining virtual world and real world. It's super exciting anyway. So I will be, uh, finding more powerful partner to join our project and then to enhance our ecosystem so that maybe this Edoverse is going to be one of the biggest and crazily huge project in the world. Our goal is maybe, I'm not sure we will include, you know, Facebook Metaverse into Edverse, I guess, I hope. Yeah. Thank you so much. So maybe I will uh, introduce some, you know, kind of progress in this uh, insider news so that maybe people definitely must be thrilled to listen to, you know, our uh, progress. Thank you so much. Thank you again. And welcome back. It's great to have you with us today. Thank and, you. Uh, also next, uh, I would like to ask Chief Token Engineer, TS, to speak about uh, technical details. All right, so let me exp explain regarding the technical details. <laughs> and I'm really enjoying to build the uh, newest and uh, very futurable tokenomics into the Edoverse. <laughs> and now I'm uh, engaged in uh, def define defining the uh, smart contract of our native token called Edo Koban and Edzeni. And now I'm calculating the market cap as well as the unlock, unlock and distribution schedule of both tokens. And in addition to defining, defining the smart contract, I'm now uh, making the incentive mechanism by uh, manipulating the tokenomics into the metaverse. And our tokenomics is basically uh, basically manipulated uh, Nash equilibrium. And uh, that is the basic logics of game theories by and and for uh, to achieve uh, the new tokenomics by manipulating Nash equilibrium, uh, we are going to use not only our native token, but also uh, using the liquidity provider tokens, as well as the native tokens such as Ethereum by payment, as well as uh, discounting and bonding. <laughs> so uh, I'm really happy to, uh, uh, to make an explanation <laughs> regarding the tokenomics and um, to build a sustainable token mix by the virtual world. And, uh, this is my largest challenge in the, in my short life. And, uh, would like to build the best metaverse in the world by, uh, supervising with Tokugawa-san and, uh, and our brilliant team members like, uh, Gen-san. So uh, please uh, stay tuned to our progress regarding the uh, details of smart contract as well as tokenomics. Yeah, that's that's all to me. Thank you. Thank you again. And also the next, uh, Dominique, could you please inform us about our project, the updates? Oh, thank you, Oksana. And welcome back again uh, from Amarajas. And thank you, TS. And also 
Thank you, Shogun Tokugawa. Uh, last week, uh, we had a deep, deep discussion how we should make uh, the cities and virtual and realistic basis. And a hybrid token system. Uh, we are now sharing a vision to create edible edibles with a high, very high motivation with everybody. So in our edibles design, we start from major symbolic structures from uh, like Edo Castle, Nihonbashi Bridge, or Zojuji Temple. We have um, core areas that should, um, that should be built just like uh, Edo landscape in that period. And at the first stage, except for the major symbolic properties that we put the vacant properties that can be cultivated by users. As, as well as the uh, Edo designs, we concluded we would fix our fast token allocation and to fix the basic, uh, basic token uh, ecosystem visions and concept of the token designs. Uh, Corbans, um, that TS just mentioned that is a governance token and to rare to get for everybody. And the users can enjoy using the Ed, uh, Zeni token, Edo Zeni token for any transactions and game to play. And if you own a certain amount of Zeni, uh, you can exchange them to the carbon token too. And we are discussing how our token ecosystem can contribute to solve the, the poverty problem in the world. And that is, as, as Gem mentions, that we will create some donation system called the Terakoyas. Uh, that was a grant-free education system in the Japanese Buddhist temple in the Edo period. And once users earn the tokens and the Terakoya Guild will receive the donation and allocate it to a society in the world. So if you make some donation to Terakoyas, uh, we might receive the rare token Kobans as a good behavior. Uh, we call them um, uh, iki behavior. The iki is in the Japanese language. Um, then, if he, iki behavior helps poor society to step up from the from the puberty. So, uh, we will report this cre uh, creation process with the token ecosystem and Edo City design in this weekly insider. Stay tuned. Thank you, Dominique. And thank you, everyone, for uh, speaking and for uh, listening. So we will meet next week. Thank you. Goodbye.